Hey friends! It's just me today. Um, this is Lisa from Little Annie Z and Mama Z. We um, have so many things going on. Um, everybody is scattered. Um, you met my daughter Christiana on the last floss tube and she couldn't make it today. She's got um, some fun things going on in her life so hopefully I'll have her on and she will share um, and my mom has just gotten back from a trip so she's been traveling a lot this summer she and my dad so um, it's just me again um, but uh, one of you guys mentioned that you would love to see all three generations on a floss tube so hopefully we can make that happen um, I'm in my sewing room today um, with a bunch of things spread out all around me so I have quite a bit to share with you um, I've got a previous finish um, some works in progress and some fully finished objects um, and some haul so I wanted to get started by saying thank you to all the new subscribers um, it's so much fun reading your comments and um, it's just we really appreciate it um, so um, not much going on as far as life updates um, we have a, another big family dinner planned um, in a two weeks I think I'm gonna be hosting um, a birthday celebration and um, we have a baby shower planned next month for my niece and nephew um, and I've been organizing um, some things in my craft room you can see my fabric is all folded nice and I'm trying to keep it that way <laughs> um, but I've organized um, my trims my my um, cross stitch linen um, my patterns um, and so I'll share a little bit more of that with you um, in a little bit um, but hobby farm updates not much going on we planted some fall things um, for the aeroponic um, garden that I have so lots of lettuce um, it's mainly lettuce some kale some cabbage um, so yeah that's that's going to be probably pretty soon we'll probably be hooking that up and starting that um, but we've already got the seeds started um, and we did have a giveaway um, last video and we did have a winner so we it was for a 14 count black Ada and some pearl cotton DMC colors, some nice bright colors to go on the black Ada. So the, the question that I asked was when do you do your fall decorating? And um, probably for many of you, your fall decorating is already done. Um, let's see, I think tomorrow is the first day of fall. So the winner of this is Laura T. So Laura T, you said you do your decorating on September 1st. <laughs> so that's right around the time that I did mine. Um, so Laura, contact me. Um, my email address will be linked in the description box and I will get this out in the mail to you. So I don't have a giveaway planned for this um, this time around because honestly I'm not getting a lot of response for um, for giveaways so I figured I'll just wait until the channel maybe gains some momentum and go from there um, and see what happens so I do this for fun it's something fun that I can do with my daughter and my mom so um, but I thought giveaways you know everybody loves giveaways so I'm not sure um, when I'll do the next one. Maybe I'll wait till 500 subscribers and see, um, maybe do a little bit um, 
of a bigger giveaway. So we'll see. Um, okay, so I have a previous finish, but before I show you that, I wanted to, sh to give you an idea of our long history of big family dinners. I thought this was a fun photograph. This is an old photograph from the 1930s. You can see how um, this is a Brooklyn um, apartment, and you can see all of the people jam-packed into one little tiny kitchen and um, so right here in the middle this is my grandfather and this is my grandmother so she was about 19 years old and my grandfather was probably about 20 or 21 here but these are all relatives and neighbors and so we never gave up our big family dinners so this is I just wanted to share this photograph with you this hangs in my kitchen um, okay, so I have a previous finish, um, and it's just a very simple DIY idea. Um, I bought a template, a triangular template, and I also bought a, um, I should have brought it up, but I forgot. It's, it's a banner type, um, instead of a bunting shape, it's more of a, um, rectangle at the top and so um, I got some cute lace and and I traced the template on the burlap fabric and then these chipboard letters and I just spelled out the word autumn and it hangs um, on my shelf in the kitchen so um, very simple you just take the sewing machine and just sew straight down um, and my kids tease me because they say, I'm so glad that you put what, what season it is, Mom, so we don't forget. <laughs> so it was just kind of a funny joke in our house. But um, I haven't been hanging these very, very much lately, but I found them and I thought, oh, I'm going to take this out again and hang it. So I thought I'd share that with you guys. So I made one for every season. Um and just change the the fabric up and the shape up and um, the chipboard letters are the same um, I found them in black and white and then this um, like newsprint color um, okay so I just that was just my one previous finish um, I have a lot of whips to show you so um, my first one let's see what should I show you first um, I'll save the cross stitch piece for last. Um, I bought some of this yarn from Hobby Lobby. It was on sale, and I have been waiting for this to go on sale. It's called Eternal Bliss. Um, it's their brand, Yarn Bee. And um, so the pattern was just one that was hanging there on the shelf. I ripped it off and brought it home. Um, and I decided, because I'm always shortchanging myself with yarn, so I thought, I'm going to do exactly what the pattern says. I have everything I need. Um, so I bought the 12 skeins of yarn um, and came home and realized I didn't have the needles that were called for. So I, I tried my, I, I did have the straight fit size 50 needles that it calls for um, and it was just falling off so it did call for circular needles size 50 circular, circular needles um, but the biggest size circular that I had was size 17 and I was trying to work with that and it was just way too tight um, so I ordered these on Amazon size 50 and they're really pretty and I love the cable in the center. It's nice and long. So my stitches are coming out much nicer. It's just a basic stockinette stitch, which is knit one side, purl the other side. So as I get a couple more rows in, um, you'll be able to see the, the stitch a little bit better. The texture of the yarn doesn't really show the stitch off too well, but... Um, and by the way, I am standing on a creaky floorboard. <laughs> okay, 
So that was one of my works in progress. Another one is this um, Better Homes and Gardens um, Filet Crochet Pattern from 1988. It's I found this in a book, I think it was a library book, and made a copy of it. Um, so I'll just flash the chart up really quick and I'll show you my progress. So you just use um, bedspread weight yarn and I'm using, um, let's see what the name of it is, DMC Traditions 100% Mercerized Crochet Thread. This is, um, see if it'll tell me, it doesn't tell me the, um, the weight, but it is Ecru, and it's bedspread, you know, bedspread weight yarn. I forgot if it's 10 or 20, but, um, this roll that it's on is very sturdy. I'm going to save this and, um, maybe do a drum or something, a cross stitch drum. So I'm, I'm using size seven um, or 1.65 millimeter crochet hook. So very tiny, tiny crochet hook there. And I had to modify the pattern a little bit because I have a frame that I'm going to put it in. And I didn't want the scalloped edge at the bottom, so I'm making the entire thing um, a rectangle. So this is what I have so far. You can see the flowers at the bottom and the house and the trees. So right above this is going to start the numbers and the alphabet. So um, this sits right beside my, my stitchy spot downstairs. And I keep keep it in this um, batter bowl. This is a pottery batter bowl that I purchased at a farmer's market, and I loved the color inside of it. I'm trying to see, yeah, there it's like a blue green color on the inside, um, but it holds my yarn perfectly. So I've got that. And then one of my other works in progress is my Stitching with the Housewives calendar crates for November. So we've got that. It's so much fun to stitch. I'm really enjoying it. Um, and I'll show you my progress. So I'll stand over here. So I love the little wagon. Um, these colors are muted and just really pretty. I totally messed up down here. <laughs> I don't know. I, I can't figure out my mistake. Um, but I got everything squished in and I'm good with it. So that's just how it goes sometimes. Um, and put that aside. I also bought this um, this little sprig to put into the piece from Hobby Lobby that um, will go with that November calendar crates. I love the the little berries here just reminded me of cranberries and the um, just the colors the colors really matched the thread. Okay, so that was all of the works in progress. Now I will share with you my finishes. Um, I have some fully finished objects. Um, I made this huge, um, I guess you can say needle book. Um, I did an applique on the front and an applique, applique on the back um, and I just used some felt and made some pockets where I keep my thread and my scissors and um, my little thread bits there 
And so this serves a lot of different purposes. Um, I have been stitching on that dark Ada, you know, to do the calendar crates. So this gives me a white background um, to put all, you know, to lay across my, my lap so I can see the holes through the black Ada. Um, the applique was really fun. I got this wacky, um, wacky web template. It's also called the periwinkle template um, to do the applique on the front and the back. I used some Lori Holt. Um, I think the majority of this is from Bake Sale 2, her collection. Um, and so putting this together was a lot of fun. I just did a basic quilt square for the front and back and I used some fusible batting. I really love this. It makes the job so much easier when I'm sewing everything together. So I got this from Missouri Star Quilt Company, same as um, same as this. And then I got some fusible, lightweight fusible um, interfacing iron-on, well, fusible iron-on, um, to do the um, this the quilt block for that project. So I just wanted to show you the um, what I got to do that project, and it's um it was a fun project. Um, I just pinked the edge. Oops! I just pinked the edge of my felt and just created the little pockets. Um, super easy and and really fun to do. Um, okay, I gotta go get that template that fell before I forget and wonder where is it when I, um, go to use it again. So hold, please. Okay. <laughs> um, okay, and then another one of my finishes was, let me put this away, was a pillow that... Sherry McConnell posted um, a video of small projects. It's one of her most recent videos. Um, and she used this um, Amy Cinebaldi pattern. The pattern is for a, a Christmas pillow. Um, and she used the Cozy Up fabric for um, a fall pillow. And I thought, I have a lot of the Cozy Up fabric. Um, and so I did a fall pillow. And she adapted the, um, the wording. So the wording that comes with the pattern is, um, for the winter pattern, is called All is Calm, All is Bright, Merry Christmas to You. And then the one that she used um, and she posted it on her blog aquiltinglife.com is life starts all over again when it gets crisp in the fall and that's an F. Scott Fitzgerald quote and I used this put it under my two and a half inch strips and I traced it um, this is the back I just use like a grunge um, fabric from Hobby Lobby and made the um, the pillow back. The instructions in, in this pattern is super simple and I didn't have a pillow form or a pillow to fit inside of it but I um, just used some rolled up batting and stuck it in there and this sits in a little basket under my fall tear tray um, the table that I have the fall tear tray on. So, um, I, the pattern says to, um, embroider this, but I just traced it with this type of pen. It's a paper mate flare medium and it glides really nicely. Um, I think if I try to use a Sharpie, it would just bleed through and kind of skip this glided really well. Um, so 
Again, it's a Paper Mate Flare Medium Point, and it it worked great. It didn't it didn't trans you know transpose onto anything. Um, you know, I did wait for it to dry a few uh, you know a couple minutes before I ironed it. I didn't iron right on it, um, and then I used a core um, like a um, different color thread that matched the blue in here to do the quilting and that's all the quilting I did and I used that fusible um, batting behind it as well that fusible batting has been my best friend I love it and I am so excited that my points all matched up on my on my quilt I used the charm pack and then just um, cut them in quarters and it was perfect. I'm just really happy with the way it turned out. Um, all right, and then my next finish was this autumn pillow. Um, I have one of those um, primitive rusty bells on here that I just put on with um, a black safety pin. Um, I showed you the pattern that I downloaded from the Tiny Modernist blog. It was a free pattern. And I used um, Antique Blue Ada 14 count from Hobby Lobby. And then I had um, some remnant fabric from my local quilt shop. I think it's a Civil War reproduction fabric. I thought it was really cute and matched kind of cute with this and um, I love how the orange pops on this blue um, I'm pretty sure I used all the called for colors um, and then the back is just some wool um, that I had um, because I sewed all the way around and then and then stuffed it through the back and patched it up with this and then I just added a, a little patch of fabric over that just to give it a little something extra but I stuffed this with a combination of um, polyfill and um, lizard litter so that it just sits upright it has some weight to it um, I'll show you my husband had some lizard litter that he gave me it's, it's it's basically just crushed up walnut shells um, looks like sand but it's nice and heavy he said this whole bag probably cost him like no more than ten dollars not even so um, it's now one of the supplies in my craft room um, and yeah, so I love how this turned out, especially with that little bell. All right. Now, my next um, finish, I'll show you this. Ah. Um, I got this piece at Hobby Lobby, um, and it, um, I spray painted it. A, like a sage green color it was unfinished um, and then I put some stickers that I had these are my husband's initials and tools because he he works with tools a lot and I thought this would be cute to kind of put his initials on there um, and then I spray painted it with chalk paint there is a um, trying to remember the brand I want to say can't remember the brand I'm sorry but um, it's a spray chalk paint and then I distressed it a little bit with some sandpaper and I think it came out really cute so I have some overhead lighting and it's not really doing this justice but I put in um, some burlap to line it it's the same burlap I used to do that autumn um, um, that autumn bunting 
And then I found this cute little um, barn at Hobby Lobby in the Christmas ornament section. And I wanted to, um, maybe at some point I'll get a larger barn that I can put all of these cute little pillows in. Um, I'm really excited at how these turned out. This is um, Lori Holt stitch cards. Um, and I made them into little pillow finishes by following um, um, Java Girl Stitches, um, her tutorial. I didn't do the tutorial exactly like she, I mean, I didn't do them exactly like her tutorial, but it's based on that. And I love the, the cow with the daisy button. And then this is the back. I use some fabric and then just put a little button there. So that's, that's the cow. I did three of them. I did the pig and the little ice pop. These, these buttons here are from Kimberbell, um, a Kimberbell collection. This is my back. And then the third one is a horse eating the watermelon. I thought that was so cute. And then the backing for that. And then on top of the um, the burlap, I just put in some wool yarn balls that I had in my stash just to kind of prop the pillows up. And I chose some fall colors so that um, it would look cute um, on the floor. This sits on the floor next to an, an old chair that I have. So... Um, I really love how it all turned out. Um, eventually, I would love to get um, maybe maybe even a kid's toy barn to put all of these cute pillows in, you know? So we'll see. But um, I was keeping an eye on uh, my Goodwill trips, and I haven't found anything yet. But So I'm just really happy at how that turned out. Okay, a couple more finishes, um, and these are quilting related. Um, I took out my Lori Holt Spelling Bee book. Um, I've been watching some of the videos that she's doing now with the So Happy, and just fell in love with this all over again. I, I put it away, didn't really do anything with it when I bought it um, until now, so I took out that book and I made a little wall hanging that says quilts and it's for my kitchen. I have a quilt ladder in the corner of my kitchen and um, these are these are not all of her fabrics. I actually I think the only one that's not hers is this pink polka dot one. Um, but the backing fabric is hers from Bake Sale I believe. And again, I used, can't remember if I, no, I think I used a scrap of batting for this. I didn't use the fusible. I didn't quilt it. Um, I used a bindless finish. So you can see it's basically just a little border that I put around there to mimic a binding, but it's really not a bound wall hanging. Um, it's just a quilt sandwich that I quilted and turned inside out and um, stitched it closed right there. So it looks bound, but it's really not. You can Google um, how to finish a quilt without binding and you'll find the instructions for this. So I, I think this is really cute. Um, and so that hangs a above my quilt ladder in the kitchen and um, I'm trying to put a seasonal quilt on that quilt ladder so I showed you this Jolly Bar book um, before and I took a pattern from that and created this Jolly Bar quilt using Coriotor's Cozy Up fabric. Let me see if I can 
there's the top. And then the bottom. So it has three large stars in it. If you can make out the stars, there's one right there. One at the top. And then the neutral triangles that I used are from um, Kona's um, I think I showed you the charm pack that I bought to do this um, in my last video. It's from Kona, and it's the neutrals. And then there's the, the last star. I'm really excited about how this turned out. And then the back, I just used... Um, Another Coriolis collection um, with the little bees on it. I've showed you this fabric before. Then I just did some quick quilting um, on the machine. I didn't even do a pattern. I just did some straight quilting in certain areas, like you could tell along the top. And then I zigzagged some store-bought binding on. I am loving store-bought binding. Um, it saves me a lot of frustration. I am still not <laughs> able to do binding where it looks flawless on my quilts. I'm just, it's going to take me some practice. Um, but this is, this is one of my best corners ever. <laughs> so, um... So that is all of my finishes. And I want to share with you a couple things that I got in haul for my haul. Let me get myself organized here. So I don't forget anything because I have my, my notes. I must have been a really good student in school because I still write notes years later. Okay, so my haul. Um, I got some fabrics that I'll show you. I discovered that Hobby Lobby had a remnant basket and I just rummaged through there and I found some really cute fabrics to use as um, some as backgrounds. So this is a pink and white dot fabric. I can use this as a background fabric or finishing for cross stitch. Um, I love using this color as a background in quilting. So I got that. It's just a basic like cornflower blue color. I found this. This was cute. Um, these are all fabrics from Hobby Lobby, like I said. This is the fat quarter on, that was hanging on their shelf. That would be cute finishing um, fabric for cross stitch. Um, another one appropriate for background, that's a black cross. And then I found this cute fabric. This would be cute as a project bag. And this would be cute as a project bag too. I love this fabric. And then I found some velvet dish, <laughs> um, Nate, um, olive green fabric for doing backgrounds on pillows, um, something like that. I thought that would be cute um, for like primitive finishes to back a, a pillow with. And then I got some fall colors felt. They had their felt on sale. Not that felt is expensive, but um, I thought, well, I'll just pick up several colors and practice wool applique with the felt before I actually invest in some wool. Um, so I thought that might be a fun project to do. Um, I've been really intrigued by um, Bonnie, the log cabin stitchers, um, wool applique video. She did like a wool along with friends 
and um, so watching her videos kind of inspired me um, and what what um, I learned is you can go to Goodwill and buy wool clothing items and just cut them up and use it for wool applique so um, but I'm gonna practice with this first and see how it goes and then for my toolbox so that I can um, change things out seasonally I got some picks um, so I got these buffalo plaid twirly things and some green um, greenery that I can stick in this toolbox and um, do some Christmas pillows I got a couple more finishing items for cross stitch um, I got these cute little buttons from Hobby Lobby they are super small and then small and I fell in love with them I use these on the backs of my um, farm animal pillows. And then I found this cute little sled from Hobby Lobby that I can do a, a finish on and stick it in my tear tray or in the toolbox. Um, and then I also found this at Hobby Lobby, this acorn. It'd be cute to put a fall finish on this, maybe chalk paint it, I'm not sure. But I thought it was too cute to pass up because I might use it maybe next year or something like that. Okay. And then I found some other fun things at Hobby Lobby. I found this pink tomato and these cute little bird pins. Um, my mom told me she found hers at Hobby Lobby, and so I picked them up, and it just sits on my little tea cart over here with my red tomato. So I've got, and this red tomato is very old. This is, I mean, it's, it's like maybe 25 years old. And then I got the pink one sitting next to it. Um, and then... I had a heyday at Hobby Lobby picking out my binding. So this is um, double fold quilt binding bias tape. So I've got yellow, ivory, pink, gray. And it was when the notions were on sale and so I got several of each color for my quilt binding. Um, this is stone blue and white. This stone blue is really pretty. Let me see if I can. Mm, it's not really showing true to color. And then here's the cozy up layer cake. So I love these colors for fall and the patterns. If you all haven't seen this, um, it's just really different for fall. I love these little puffy flowers. So super beautiful. Um, I think what I'm going to do with this is to make magic circles. I got these from the Missouri Star Quilt Company. Comes in two sizes. I got the large and the small. And this is how they turn out. Super cute for a table runner or placemats or mug rugs um, or maybe a little um, stitchy mat. Um, so I think I'm going to um, do something with that. Um, then I got off of Amazon a Lori Holt pink um, book holder and I really love this. This has come in super handy. Um, and a couple things. Um, so when you're doing applique pieces that are smaller, um, 
I found that it's easier to use a small rotary cutter um, so I picked one up at Hobby Lobby when the notions were on sale um, and then I got this um, new this was a Needlework Expo new item Bristol Berries so it has been um, one of my unicorn charts to do a Bristol sampler um, I am not there yet with stitching on linen um, so I thought I will try the Bristol Berries um, and see how I do but I just fell in love with this when I saw it I got this from um, Annabella's on Etsy um, and then another one of my unicorn charts which I'm super excited about I don't think I've showed this to you yet but you all have seen it it's a it's not a brand new item but um, I love 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 this welcome spring um, what what got me were those blue eggs and the sheep and I want to show you the blue um, that it calls for I just got it I got a couple threads in the mail um, it's a week's color and it's beautiful it's called sea foam Let's see if I can yeah it is so pretty so that's the color of the eggs and that's that's what sold me <laughs> love that that color so much and then I picked up this free pattern on the DMC website. Um, it's called ABC Magic Christmas, and it's a, um, a red sampler. So you can check that out on the DMC website. And then um, Christina from Wildst Iris Naps Designs. Um, this is a free chart from her website and it's called all is calm and I, I'm going to try and either do a pillow or a drum with that um, we'll see how it goes again not a seasoned stitcher on linen at all but I'm gonna give it a whirl and then yesterday I pre-ordered this on Amazon I got Sherry McConnell's A Quilting Life her new book and she's got some really cute small quick projects in here so that's what sold me on this book um, and then almost last almost um, I have showed you before my um, obsession with floss tags um, I wanted some Thanksgiving ones and so I went on the photo cube on Etsy and downloaded some Thanksgiving ones and then I punched them myself I printed it on cardstock that has this tartan plaid on the back um, and sometimes I'll print them on photo paper to give it a more of an artistic um, canvas type of look which is this but it's very hard to punch through it so I think um, the cardstock is working well also, at Michael's, I came across these jewelry tags, um, and I just punched, punched them out here, and then um, a bigger hole here. So it's really an earring card, but it works great because it's thick for um, for your floss. Um, and then one last thing that I want to share with you is how I organized my my charts and patterns I picked up from Amazon this came in a set of two and it's there that's that's a better um, representation of the color it's pink uh, tweed very sturdy very well made I was worried for the price that it was just going to be cheapy and not stand up but it worked it's it's really great um, 
So you can put legal size or, or regular letter size in here. Um, and the best thing is it will fold flat. Um, and so this is the lid. And then I have my patterns um, in file folders here. So um, super cute, functional, and I really love it. Um, so I think that is all for today. Um, thank you for being with me. Thanks for putting up with the, the overhead light. Um, if you have any questions or comments, just leave them below. I would love to hear from you. And um, I just really appreciate you guys. Um, hopefully next time I'll have my mom and my daughter or one or either of them with me. Um, and yeah, so until next time, bye friends.